So to put these in alphabetical order, I will need to pay attention to the last name of my authors for each of my citations. Right now it's a little tricky to see because my citations are so close together, being only one line apart. So what will help me is to add my double spacing to my Works Cited page, which is a requirement of MLA Works Cited anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do Control A to select all of my text again. And in Word, there happens to be this button right here. It is the line in paragraph spacing button. And when I select that, it gives the option of how much to space my lines. Right now it shows that one is checked off because my text is single spaced from line to line. So I'm going to go down to two because I want double spacing for my document and click on it to select it. And it is now double spaced works cited page. Now I can see a little bit better where my authors are and I can start putting them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to start looking for A's. I don't have any A's. Then I'm going to look for B's. And I did have a B down here, Bartell. So I want to make sure I know where my citation ends. And I highlight that particular citation. And then I'm going to left click to select it and I'm simply going to drag and you'll notice that I have a cursor that's now slightly darker and thicker than my normal cursor that's holding my text. There's a little box underneath my cursor as well to show that I'm holding text and then I'm going to release it right where I want it. I placed it right at the top and now that is in first position. And I'm going to do the same for the rest of the citations. Okay, so that's all of my citations. And I'm just double checking that I have these all in alphabetical order correctly. Okay, now I can start working on my hanging indents, my title, and then double checking uh, any mistakes that might exist on my citation page. So I'm going to start by adding my title for my citation page. So now that I already have the document formatted as double spaced, I'm going to put my cursor at the very top, the first line, and I'm going to hit enter. That automatically double spaces from the first line to the second. So I don't need to do anything other than hit enter. And now I'm going to add my title. The title needs to be in the center of the page. And so Word has these very helpful buttons here for alignment. This is left aligned, which is where the cursor currently is. This is center aligned. This is right aligned. So that would mean the cursor begins over on the right side of the page. And then there's justified. So we want center aligned. So I'm gonna click on center and that places my cursor at the center of the page. And then I'm going to type my title, which is works cited. Now this is very important. A lot of students make mistakes on the title. The title does not look any different from the rest of the text. It is not a different font or font size. It is not in all capitalization and it is not bolded and it is not underlined. It looks just like the rest of the text. The only thing you want to make sure is that the first word is capitalized, the second word is capitalized, and that you have an S for works cited if you have more than one citation on your page. If you only have one citation, then you would make this work cited singular. But because we have several citations on the page, this automatically becomes works cited to indicate that there is a plural or multiple citations on the page. And that's it for my title. So now I can move on to hanging indents. 
a lot of students tend to make this more complicated than it is. Some students will put their cursors here and begin hitting the space bar and try to adjust the line just by hitting many, many spaces. You could do that, but one, it takes you longer. Second, you're not sure if it's going to properly align with the rest of your citations. Some students also, when they have their cursor here on the second line, will hit tab because tab is an indent. But then they'll notice that all of their citation has been shifted, not just the two lines that need to be shifted in this particular citation. So I'm going to undo that. An easy way to add hanging indents to all of your citations is to first select all of your citations. Then go up to the top to the menu options and click on layout. You then see here indent spacing and paragraph options. Click on this little pop-up box here for paragraph settings. And then you get more specific options for your indents, spacing and indentation. Head over to this area that says special. Click on the drop down options, select hanging and it should automatically insert a 0.5 or half inch indent. If it doesn't, just change this to say 0.5. At the bottom, you'll see a preview of what your document will look like, and then go ahead and click OK. Now all of your citations have a hanging indent. All right, so this looks like a pretty good work cited page. Now, what I need to worry about here is finalizing my citation page uh, to make it as accurate as possible. So remember, when we first started, we cleared all formatting from our document. So I now need to go back and add italics. Now you can do this now, or you can do it after you do your cleanup. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup first, and then I'm going to add my italics at the end. So. A couple of things to keep in mind when you copy and paste citations from databases or from our catalog or from citation generators of any sort, they are only 90 to 95% accurate. You always want to double check the citation for accuracy. They are not perfect. So the first citation, for example, is an ebook. And so I know that this being the title of the ebook needs to be in italics. Now, the other thing to know about an ebook is that I actually only need to put that this is an ebook before the publication. And then I can remove this URL. This URL is actually unnecessary for an ebook. I also noticed that there is an additional space right here between the title and my colon, so I'm going to delete that. And that is a more accurate citation for the ebook. Now, for my next citation, notice that there is a URL here. This URL has HTTPS in front of it. That HTTPS with the slashes is unnecessary in your citation, so I'm going to remove that. Now this is an article title. I do need to put in italics the source of this article, so I'm going to put this in italics, and I'm also going to put this in italics. Now for the following citation, this is a book, a print book. So I'm going to italicize the title. And then I notice that there is a slash here. That slash is unnecessary. And I'm going to remove that and that extra space that is also unnecessary. And then I'm going to, on my next citation, make sure to include italics wherever I know italics is needed.
and I'm going to keep doing that for the rest of my citations. Any italics that are needed. Removing any HTTPS. Now this citation is interesting. There is a URL included for the database, but there is also a DOI. A DOI is a document address. It's a way to locate a document. And typically with MLA, the DOI is preferred over the URL. So if you have a DOI, that is better than having a URL. So you can leave it because it does include both, or you can remove the URL just to have the DOI. And then I'm going to finish up here with my italicization. And then here you'll notice I have zines that is in all caps. That is the way that the article was published in all capitalization. But in your works cited page, nothing should be in all caps. Only the first letter of words should be capitalized. So I needed to remove that. And then I also noticed that broken pencil is the publication. It's repeated here. That's also unnecessary, so I can feel free to delete one of these based on this particular source, which I'm familiar with, so I can remove that. Now, I did a quick edit here, but you should take your time to double check to make sure that volume is formatted correctly, number, year, page number, um, anything like that. All of those little details, you wanna make sure that they are perfect.